Welcome back to the Ultimate Dirt Bike Camper Van Build Series, where I turn my 2022 Transit 350 box van into, well, yeah. In the last episode, we got all of the foundation work done, including the ceiling, furring strips, subfloor, insulation, and walls. A few layers of primer and paint, and it's now ready for the fun stuff. One of the most important things I need in the van is a comfortable place for two people to sit. I like the idea of inviting friends into my space to hang out. I also need a cozy place to do video editing and eat food. One thing I can't stand about a lot of builds I see is the flat bottomed bench seats with a vertical backrest. Talk about uncomfortable. A few pieces of plywood and some shims stacked on my ice co fridge made sorting this out a breeze. I spent about four hours playing with different geometries to figure out the best seat and back angles to fit my needs. These opposing bench seats are also going to act as large storage compartments, so the overall dimensions were a very important factor to consider. I need to give a huge thank you to Battleborn Batteries. They've been an incredible supporter of this build series. They've provided me with their top of the line LifePo batteries and Victron energy components to ensure my power system meets all of my demands. More on that coming soon. Also, a huge thanks to Iceco for providing me with this awesome VL75 Pro-D fridge freezer combo. I've been using it for a few months now and I absolutely love it. Check out the links in the description of this video to purchase these products. scary not gonna lie as you can tell the plywood alone is pretty flimsy you should know by now that I build everything sturdy let's add some supports all of the supports I use construction adhesive and a combination of nails and screws all said and done I'm pretty confident that these seats won't have any issues Initially, I tried out these store-bought hinges for the seat tops, but they flexed and creeped way too much. Later, I added these heavy-duty hinges with custom bends in place to maximize the strength. Much better. It sure is nice having access to my dad's precision metalworking equipment. Some ideas are just a lot easier to execute with the right tools. Other ideas, you just need to pull out a knife and start hacking up perfectly good items laying around to get the job done. These LED shop lights had the perfect diffuser lens for what I was looking for. You may think it's stupid to butcher a perfectly good light assembly, but sometimes it's just what you have to do to achieve what you want. Skylights turned out great, but how cool would it be to have that soft, even light even at nighttime? 12 of these absurdly expensive 400 lumen light bars, some hot glue, tape, and those aluminum brackets we made, and I've got an incredible solution. The angle of the brackets had to be carefully sorted out so that the light diffused as evenly as possible. The idea with the greenhouse panel squares was to diffuse the light even more, hide the light bars when not in use, and to provide more insulation. It didn't quite mask the bars as I hoped, but a little elbow grease with some scotch bright, and I'd say it couldn't look much better. I 
can't recommend these Wago wire clamp connectors enough. They're super easy to use. They feel very, very sturdy. And if I ever have to swap out a switch, it's very easy to do. So anywhere I was able to access wire ends, I tried using these to basically future-proof the maintenance of the vehicle. Check out the Amazon affiliate link in the description of this video and you can get yourself some. How sick is that? Oh, another one in the back. Those of you who watched my previous van build series also know that my dad owns a CNC machine shop. I've grown up around this equipment my whole life. I'm spoiled to say the least. Everything being done here is absolutely possible with much more basic tools, you'll just need a little more patience. Some things like this wardrobe, I didn't film the whole process of building. It's in a spot that's very hard to film and it also took me like six hours because every single piece had to be custom fit and installed into place very precisely. Although it's a box van, it's far from perfectly square and in this specific location, I was working around the tapered corner as well. This makes it very difficult to build so it doesn't end up looking like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. I designed the shelves to have these grooved trim pieces for both look and to add strength to the quarter inch plywood. It turned out to be a fairly lightweight and very strong setup. Not to mention how good it'll look once I stain those trim pieces. This here is a perfect example of the drawing doesn't mean sh I talked about this in episode two. The 3D drawing I made just gives me basic dimensions, but it doesn't help much when it comes down to actually constructing stuff. I need things to be strong, but as light as possible. Building a three-sided box with dividers while outside of the van, then simply screwing it into the wall would be the easiest thing to do. But that uses so much more material that isn't quite necessary. This is what I came up with. I can't say it's the best way to do it, but it sure turned out strong and the amount of material used is pretty minimal. I can do a pull up from it, it'll hold. We are working on the roof rack here. I've got these 80-20 cross members. Uh, so we're gonna just put the square up to the outer edge. I can tell already we're definitely pretty skewed, so we'll have to move this guy over a bit. We already have that end fixtured, by the way, which we did not film. That end down, and I would say that looks good enough. It's stuck. <laughs> Get a, a clamp and make it easier. Just looking for my nuts. There they are. That's a bolt, but <laughs> there's a nut somewhere in there. <laughs> You've seen enough. Those rails from earlier got powder coated black and will serve as hook points for bike straps. I know what you're thinking, Brad, why didn't you just buy off the shelf L track or E track or some other system where you can move around hooks? Well, I don't really like those systems because A, you have to buy hardware, which can be kind of limiting. They rattle around and make a little bit of noise when not under tension. And with this system, I just have holes every six or so inches so I can put a hook wherever. And I don't need other hardware. All I need is the strap itself. And some of those smaller brackets also got powder coated for the bed frame. 
The brackets from 8020 are terrible. The bolt heads hit the radius of the angle because the hole isn't in the right location. So I made my own. They're much better. Saved me a lot of money too. How's it feel? Pretty good, actually. Yeah, it sounds good. Doesn't sound like it's binding but or. You are gonna have yeah, it's... this issue. Right. Hopefully, the bed mechanism there made at least a little bit of sense, but we'll get back to that later. It was actually a really complicated issue. You gotta think this bed is gonna weigh around 120 pounds once a memory foam mattress and blanket. All that stuff is on it, so we had some problem solving to do. Uh, I'm very thankful for my dad to help me out with that. We spent many, many nights brainstorming different ideas and uh, ways to, to make it work. And ultimately, we came up with a fantastic solution. It's been in use for numerous months now while I've been on the road, and it's fantastic. So I'll get into that in another episode. Second one's getting harder. Well, oh, I didn't want to elbow the wall. And on today's episode of incredibly painstaking and inefficient ways to do things, my dad and I punch out these uh, frames made out of steel sheet metal. You may be wondering what they're for. Well, I'll give you a hint. There are six total of them. Earlier in the episode, I showed you what they're related to. Let's hear your guesses in the comments, and whoever gets it right, gets it right. Good for you. say I've ever built a proper kitchen type cabinet in my life. There's plenty of videos on YouTube. It's pretty easy to just go look in any kitchen and see how they're built, but of course this is in the van and we're trying to use less material, make it more lightweight, but I still wanted it to look and feel like a normal kitchen cabinet. So a lot of design work had to go into this and to figuring out how I wanted to do it. Uh, I'm very happy with the end result, um, but it took a lot of time and I'm pretty happy with how it is. Again, I could do a pull up from this thing once it was mounted. So 
as great as those overhead lights are in these skylights, I really wanted a nice, subtle, warm, uh, kind of accent light. And I determined that under the upper kitchen cabinet was the place to do this. So I got these LED puck lights and kind of made a false cavity panel right there. You can see there's the lower panel, but above it is actually the shelves where I'll have plates and silverware or whatever. So there's that gap between them. All the wires are hidden. The switch is built into the panel right there. Really worked out great. Add building the cabinet doors to the list of things I completely neglected to film. Well, actually it was a conscious choice because I needed to get things done. And after all, building these doors is essentially cutting rectangles of plywood, making a couple pockets for the hinges, and then softening the corners with sandpaper and painting them. I don't really need to show you how to do that. With the help of my good buddy, Devin O'Neill, we got all the cabinet doors on. Thankfully, no trimming or squaring up required. We got super nice, even uh, gaps. They might need a little adjustment, but we'll worry about that once they're painted and on final install. But everything turned out so good. Um, got nice opening there soft close which is a little slow for my liking but uh they'll work so so i gotta finish up the inside of the cabinets a bit at a at a shelf there and i think a shelf down there cut the hole in the countertop finish the countertop put the sink and plumbing in and got a kitchen all right guys that wraps up episode three be sure to subscribe so you don't miss number four it's going to be fast paced lots of details and cool custom stuff getting done it may end up being the last episode, or there could be one more after it before the final reveal and walkthrough. Hard to say until I get more editing done. Either way, you won't want to miss it.